Hello everyone, my name is Dave Wagner and I'm the Vice President of Product Marketing in Innate. I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar on Project Email, the Black Sheep of Document Control. Leading today's webinar is Emmanuel De Silva. As a leader in the construction document management space, Emmanuel brings two decades of experience building and implementing solutions for contractors, engineers, and owners. More recently, Emmanuel joined Nate as part of the 2018 acquisition of QA Software and their TeamBinder product. Emmanuel is now the Vice President for Solutions Engineering, where he's focused on delivering the most functionally complete, interoperable, and modular software solutions built to optimize capital programs while controlling cost, reducing risk, and driving predictable outcomes. He attended Charles Darwin University, where he earned a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. So before I turn it over to Emmanuel, a few logistical items. All the attendees on the phone are muted, but if you have a question, we encourage you to enter it into the GoToWebinar question dialog box. We'll field these questions at the end of the presentation. Also, we'll be distributing a link to the presentation via email in the coming days. Emmanuel, the floor is yours. All right, thank you very much, uh, David. <clears throat> so let's begin. Uh, today we're gonna look over a couple of key uh, areas here. So the first one is Outlook emails. We'll take a look at why that is so widely used. Uh, and we'll take a look at Outlook as a siloed solution. Then we'll jump over to uh, the project emails. And uh, we'll take a look at how project emails are categorized, um, capturing this all in one place and uh, making sure that you have access to all of these emails. That's a really important point uh, to make sure that you can find all of that information as you progress through the project. Uh, we'll then take a look at uh, unified data and the value of having uh, unified uh, data. All of, your, uh, all of the different elements of uh, that information that you collect along the life cycle of the project uh, to make sure that that is connected together so that you can find information uh, from any piece of that uh, data. And then we'll take a look at the solution and uh, how we have tackled the, uh, you know, the problem of having um, Outlook emails, project emails and unified data in a very uh, succinct solution that uh, Innate have developed. So first of all, uh, I just want to start by saying email has totally changed the way that we communicate uh, on a daily basis. You know, uh, we uh, receive and send so many uh, emails and the beauty about emails is that uh, everything is written down, right? So you can go back in time and pull up that conversation and see exactly what has been written, right? So there's no better fact than written evidence. But ideally, you want to be capturing all of these email conversations effectively. And when there's so many people working on a project, uh, to have all of that stored in a single location where you can access it very quickly is one of the key. So let's take a look at uh, why Outlook is used so widely. Well, basically it's convenient. Outlook gives us the window into the warehouse of our conversation threads. It basically stores everything that we have said to basically everyone on the project. Right? It's fast, it's uh, efficient, right? You can create an email uh, at any point in time, send it through with some attachments and people receive that on the other end. And Outlook is used by 97% or more of project participants. It's one of the most widely used uh, email systems uh, on the planet. So what are the problems then with uh, Outlook email? Well, it's a decentralized and dispersed uh, system and this is generally uh, what emails are right there are so many different ways to correspond with organizations uh, and uh, so many uh, different ways to uh, you know um, uh, basically uh, attach various different things to uh, outgoing pieces of email uh, and those conversations are generally one-dimensional because uh, you're only ever sending an email itself uh, it can be hard to retrieve the uh, audit history R remember that all of those emails are stored in a single pst file and that's stored on everyone's computer right so if someone leaves the organization what happens is uh, you know generally that pst file is archived and um, uh, it can be hard to track it can be hard to pull that information forward again 
it's uncontrolled communication. So anyone can send an email to anyone, right? And uh, sometimes this can trigger work that uh, you do not necessarily authorize uh, to be done on the project, right? And that's where things like uh, variations start to rise. And there's no specific mail type. So when you send an email, an email is an email, right? If you want to send an RFI in an email, you attach an RFI template to the email and send it through, but it's still an email, right? Uh, and there's limited searching capability. So to be able to search for uh, all of the conversation threads that you were having uh, regarding area one, uh, you know, level one or uh, system uh, A on the project, uh, it's very hard to, to group those conversations together. So this is a statement here that basically everyone has said, um, and I would say close to uh, nearly on a daily basis. I remember he sent me an email about this. I've just got so many emails, I can't find it. So let's take a look at project emails. Now, typically when you're working on a project, right, um, let's say if you're a consultant or if you're a, you know, a subcontractor, you may typically be working on multiple projects in multiple packages, in multiple areas, and you're probably working multiple roles as well. This can be very confusing when all of your emails are coming into one inbox. So if you take a look at a project, a project is multi-dimensional and therefore project emails should be multi-dimensional. So if you take a look at a tower on the left-hand side, this can be split up into various different levels and each of those levels have different disciplines. So they had the mechanical discipline running through it. They've got the electrical discipline, the architectural and so forth. And if you take a look at the right there, a linear project uh, has different areas. So station A would be an area, track, the track between station A and B would be another area of the project. Station B, the track between B and C and station C and so on. Right, so it's important that uh, your email correspondence regarding these projects are categorized into each of those different areas, into each of those disciplines, there's categories and so forth. So let's take a look at the key requirements for project emails. <clears throat> well, it's gotta be controlled communication, right? And by controlling communication through a central register, you can uh, ensure that everything is captured in one place. All of the conversations regarding a single organization is captured uh, in one place. And you can basically filter that central register for the conversation that you are looking for. Uh, it must maintain a complete audit history. You need to go back in time and uh, take a look at everything that was said, but you need to have the confidence that that audit history is completely sound. Nothing can be deleted. Company and personal level emails, right? If you're someone with a higher authority uh, in the project, like a project manager, for example, you may want to see company-wide uh, uh, mail on the actual project to see if anything is outstanding, anything that hasn't been responded to in a certain time frame, to make sure that uh, that gets actioned uh, and expedited quickly. Construction specific mail type. So when you do send through uh, a specific uh, piece of mail on a project, right, it should be labeled as something. A site instruction has certain uh, ramifications associated with it, right? Uh, a request for information, right? Uh, or uh, notice of variation. As you send these through, and if they're labeled with the correct label, you can be you, you can uh, uh, be sure that that is received uh, on the other side and that is actioned accordingly. But more importantly, all of the other pieces of information that are associated with that site instruction uh, then uh, attach to the correct uh, element there rather than just being a single email. The ability to configure workflows. So again, you can now start to configure workflows around each of these mail types which is important for being able to control uh, who needs to respond to what uh, on a time basis and so forth. Uh, advanced searching capabilities. So being able to search through that central register uh, to take a look at all the conversations for a particular area, for a particular discipline and so forth. And even uh, search through, uh, you know, whether the status is uh, outstanding or whether it has been closed out. 
So let's take a look, let's take a look at a, a uh, unified data structure, right? And this is really something that uh, the project needs to be based on. It needs to be based on a unified data structure. Uh, but what is a unified data structure? Well, basically information exists in one place only and is referenced through links to other elements. And what that means is that uh, there is only a single source of truth for any one piece of information and it's always linked to other pieces of information. But you can access that information from any side, right? So if a site instruction is uh, attached to a specification, for example, well, you should be able to see the specification from the site instruction. And if you go the other way, if you open up the specification, you should be able to see the site instructions that are associated to the specification, right? And that's what a unified uh, data system allows you to do. So uh, why is it important? Well, as we spoke about, it's, it, it really hinges on the single source of truth, right? To be sure that the information that you're looking at is the, the only piece of information that everyone is accessing, right? That everyone has access to and it lives in that conversation thread. Users can see related items very easily through that thread, and you can search across the database, right? So if everything hinges on that single source of truth, searching through the database makes it very easy because you're looking at uh, you know, certain content that has been categorized uh, as per the uh, breakdown structure. Save time uh, spent looking for items, Right, uh, you don't need to be looking in two places, you can be looking in one. Uh, and reporting becomes very sound. So the information that's represented in the report, you know that that is the only piece of information that lives in the system. So how do we bring Outlook and project emails together? Well, we've developed a uh, very tight solution with <clears throat> the Microsoft Office products. Uh, Innate are a Microsoft Gold certified partner, and this gives us uh, a very uh, close association with Microsoft at the highest level of development partnership. So we can integrate uh, products with the entire Microsoft suite uh, very effectively. Right, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So we're going to jump into uh, the Outlook integration demonstration, and I'll just show you a few key things about the uh, integration and how you can use it throughout your project. So if I just change screens here, I'm just gonna jump into my uh, Outlook window, right? And you can see here on the left-hand side, this is my personal email system, right? I'll just uh, sort of expand that just a little bit. It's my personal email system just on the right, uh, just on the left there. And if I scroll down, this is my project specific email system here, right? Now, what's important about this system here is I've actually connected to two different projects. So this is the first project here that we're sitting in, and this is the second project. Now, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly switch to the online interface and just show you uh, what that looks like in, in the online interface. So this is uh, innate document here online, and this really is the single source of truth, right? Everything that is sent and received in the project sits in these registers, right? So long as I have access to uh, viewing that. So we're looking at the mail register, the inbox, right? And you can see that first item on the inbox is that letter, right? If I just double click that and open it up, there's the, there's the letter here and the attachment there associated with it is a document, right? The defect notice. So if I jump back into my Outlook emails in the inbox, right? You can see exactly the same uh, letter here that's represented. Now, what this integration does is it acts as a window into the uh, the innate document register, right? Everything sitting on the register is the single source of truth. This just accesses those pieces of mail so you can now execute those functions from your Outlook interface. So uh, just up the top here, very quickly, so you've got your new email button. This is for your personal mail. And if I just scroll to the right here under team by a new item, this is my project specific mail, right? And this is where I can now raise mail according to the authority that I have on this project, right? Uh, and directly send that through 
as the mail type that I've specified here. So if I'm sending a site instruction, for example, all I do is just execute that site instruction straight from my Outlook interface, right? And there you have it, right? This is the site instruction uh, template here, straight from the Outlook interface. Now, the important thing here is that any configuration settings, um, any customizations or specific mail templates, well, all of that configuration follows through. So if you have additional fields that uh, you may need to capture certain pieces of information as you send and receive uh, mail through the project, that can all be uh, configured here and flow through to this interface. So it's a very dynamic interface, but very flexible as well. I'm just going to jump back into here. Right now, let's say uh, you are uh, a consultant has uh, you know sent you a, a, a an email in your normal email system. Well, what you can actually do with the integration is you can drag and drop that piece of mail into the project, right? Respond to that particular piece of mail, and that ensures that then your response and the thread of that email is then captured inside that single source of truth uh, in innate document where it can't be deleted, right? And that's exactly what you want. You don't want that conversation thread to be deleted. Just up the top there, uh, so if we just go back into the uh, inbox register here, the reply, reply all, and forward button still remain the same. So if I'm looking at this particular item here <clears throat> in the inbox of this project, right, watch what happens when I click reply all. Okay, it will actually ask me, well, what do I want to reply in? Now, I have configured this inside the actual project to say, well, in response to a letter, you can respond in any one of these mail types. But let's say if this was an RFI, a request for information, the response type may only be a response to an RFI, right? So in this situation here, I'm just going to respond to this letter as an RFI, click OK, and straight away that RFI template will actually uh, execute. Right, so you can see how fast and efficient that is to create mail straight from uh, your Outlook interface. And the beauty about that is as you send it, it becomes a permanent part of the audit trail. It's stored on that uh, central re register here. And here's where you can start to filter those items for exactly what you're looking for. All right, just jumping back into that interface there. If I just go to the team monitor tab, here's where you can manage the projects. Right, and uh, you'll notice here that you, you can connect to any project that you're uh, that you're collaborating on, um, but more importantly, you can actually get uh, all of the pieces of mail. You can actually send and receive transmittals, and uh, you can actually synchronize uh, mail from a particular date. Right, so if I want mail only from today going forward to be synchronized, well, that well that's what I can do there. Uh, and uh, anything that is sent and received through uh, innate document on this project will then flow through to my interface here. Now with Outlook, you can select everything here um, and obviously delete it, but that won't be deleted on the master register, right? It'll just be deleted from this view. Uh, once again, anything that, that is sent and received inside this particular mailbox here under a specific project cannot be deleted, it becomes a permanent part of the audit trail. <clears throat> All right, so uh, that is what I wanted to show you for the integration. I just wanna step back into uh, the presentation here and we'll just cap off with a few key things to take away. So first of all, uh, Outlook is for non-project communication, right? If you want to communicate within a project, well, you should be communicating in a project specific uh, uh, system, right? Where it can be uh, captured and categorized correctly, <clears throat> right? Uh, and it should be categorized as, uh, according to the project structure, right? So uh, just remembering uh, back to those examples, if you're working on a vertical tower, for example, uh, those pieces of mail must be categorized uh, through level one, level two, level three, level four, um, by various different disciplines and so forth. So it should match the project structure. Uh, number three, a central repository increases efficiency, 
right? So if everyone is collaborating in a central system, it's being collected in a central repository, uh, all the information is being connected together in a unified data structure, well, you can now find things very easily, right? Simply by filtering the, re the register. And number four, conducting project mail must be just as easy as any email system. So you saw uh, the way how I can just quickly, uh, you know, execute a site instruction straight from my Outlook interface, right? And that goes through the project system where it becomes a permanent part of the audit trail and I can access that online in my innate document uh, uh, system, right? So it must be um, as easy to use as any email system. And that's the way that you get uh, all of your uh, participants throughout the project using uh, that centralized system. So just by using the integration on uh, projects, we've seen the, uh, the ability to be able to capture mail uh, rise from about, uh, you know, typically 10 to 20%, right, right up to about 90 to 95% plus, right? So it's a huge bonus to any project to be able to, you know, connect those two uh, systems together, both Outlook and the central project system. So that's all I want to go over today. Uh, let's uh, open it up to the floor. Over to you, David. Thanks, Emmanuel. Um, so we have a couple few questions here. Uh, so the first one, just to reiterate, is we will be sending out an email with a link to the presentation today uh, for everyone that registered. Um, first question I have for you is when you send an email from Project Email, what is the email address that's displayed as who it's coming from? Yeah, excellent. So uh, basically, you know, as you saw uh, back in uh, this example here, right, sending uh, a piece of mail from a user to another user, right, it actually sends it through the system from one user account to another user account, right? But as you can see here, it's coming from Joe Fredericks from Houston Contracting, right? This is his email address. Um, important thing to note is that this is stored always on the system and both users can see that one piece of mail. So it's going from user to user in the system. Great, thanks. So we've got another question. So you've shown us a lot about how your solution works with Outlook, but we're a Gmail shop. How would Gmail work with your solution? Yeah, excellent. So uh, look, Innate Document works with any email system, right? The, the integration there is specifically for Outlook, but with any email system, including Gmail, um, you know, Hotmail, whatever you might be using, uh, you still will receive email notifications, right? So if you've received a, a, a project-specific piece of mail, you will receive an email notification, right? And the email notification can come in two ways. It can either show you the entire uh, body of the message, right? So it can look exactly the same as what you see on the screen here, right? Or uh, this can be sensitized and it can simply say, look, you've received a, you've received a project specific piece of mail, click here on this link to access it, in which case it takes you back into the mainframe interface. Thanks, Emmanuel. Um, another question, is the integration slash system cloud-based or is it installed on our server at my office? Yeah, good point. So uh, the main system uh, is always uh, is always cloud based, right? Uh, but the integration itself, the integration is installed on your personal PC here, and that gives you a window into the central project register. Right? But remember that all of that mail that you're sending through uh, the project is always captured uh, in the cloud. Uh, on the uh, central infrastructure, right, where that, that's fully supported on uh, the innate cloud infrastructure with uh, backups, security, and everything. Thanks. Um, are the email templates, templates that you showed as part of the standard solution? You know, what happens if we need another template or we need to modify one of the templates you showed us? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, yes, uh, the the email templates are part of the standard solution. So when you go through the setup pro uh, process of your project, you can basically basically select any of those uh, standard templates. But more importantly, you can configure it to your own uh, organization needs and the project needs. Right now, um, uh, to uh, apply any of those templates, you can basically uh, uh, you know, add them yourself from the template library and the administrator has the ability to be able to do that. Any, uh, you know, custom templates or anything like that, you can come back to us and say, look, this is how we want a, a specific mail template to look like and these are the fields that we want in there, right? And uh, we can basically create that for you, put that as part of the uh, project and then you have full control over who can access that um, and that gets added to your own template library after that. Great. They keep rolling in, we got some more. How do you advise project email be integrated with a formal project document management system? Yes, so a good question. Uh, the one way to do that is to have a single system, right? So project mail, right? integrated with a document management system means that they need to run in the same system and those two uh, uh, modules need to be built uh, organically within that system itself, right? So you can access documentation from here, but more importantly, uh, the elements that are sitting on the document register can be connected to the mail elements that you are sending and receiving throughout the project, right? So the key thing there is that they are managed in the single system, right? But the system itself um, must run from a central project register so that all of that information is founded on the single source of truth and there's no duplicates from company register to company register, right? It always sits on a single central register. Thanks. Uh, does the project email search feature look into the actual text in the PB PDF using OCR, optical character recognition, uh, to help with search? Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, yeah, if you run that search, uh, you can be searching through PDFs. You can be also searching through uh, any you know Microsoft Office uh, based files. So Word, uh, you know PowerPoint, Excel. Um, the search will is also capable of uh, searching through those files. Great. Looks like we have one last question. When someone responds to an email sent from a project from project email, which inbox does it go to? Does it go into your personal email box or into that project box? Yeah, good uh, good point. So if someone responds to uh, the project mail, it'll actually come into the project specific mailbox, right? So if you're collaborating on a specific project, right? And, and the beauty about having all of that, uh, you know, tied into a specific project means that everyone collaborating on that project, you know, sending and receiving mail, uh, means that you will actually receive it under that project itself. So all responses coming back uh, from that project piece of mail uh, will be shown in your inbox here, right? And anything that is unread in this inbox will also be unread in exactly the same inbox online, right? So it's 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 a very tight integration uh, and um, uh, basically allows you to manage uh, project specific mail under that specific project. Thanks. Well, I certainly want to thank uh, everyone for attending. Uh, I would encourage if you'd like to uh, see some of our past webinars to visit innate.com and look under the resources webinar section or if you'd like to learn more about our products and offerings, uh, please also join our website and uh, you can find phone numbers and email address where you can contact us and we can talk more about your specific situation and how you'd like to deal with your project email. So again, thanks everyone for coming and I look forward to seeing you at our next webinar.